Hello and welcome. My name is Larissa and I'm a nerdy freelance artist who loves Disney and drinks way too much tea. And stop the presses, extra extra, this is not a drill. They're reopening Disney. When people who aren't obsessed with Disney, can't relate, complain about the parks, there are usually two major issues for them. The long lines or queues and the heat. There's really only so much you can do about the lines, but there are some things you can do to help with the heat. Personally, I find it very helpful to cool off with a fan, and yes, I know. Every list on the internet for things you have to pack for Disney includes some sort of battery operated little fan, uh, whether it's one that clips to your clothes or you wear around your necklace, the ones you buy in the parks that squirt water to or what have you. And those are all very awesome and I have been known to use those on occasion, but I'm a little more old school than that. I always lean towards things being a little bit fancier. Pretty sparkly jewelry, nice dresses, Disney princesses. So of course, I'm going to lean towards a more traditional fan for that reason, but there's other more practical reasons for them as well. First of all, no batteries. I don't have to pack extra batteries. I don't have to worry about charging anything. It is already good to go at all times. Second of all, they're cheap. You can get a whole bunch of them off of Oriental Trading or Amazon or whatever to suit your look or style or preference or whatever, or if you just want dirt cheap ones. Third, tiny. They fold up to practically nothing. So I can slip this very easily into my back pocket or side pocket of my shorts, the side pocket of my park bags. There's all kinds of places I can tuck this away very quickly. Or if I want to have it a little more secure for a ride, I can throw it down in my whole park bag just as easily, but it's still easy to grab and find while reaching down in there. I'm not getting it confused if I can't see it with my camera and my water flavors and all the other little tidbits and things that are down in the bag. It's a very distinct shape. I also like that it's all different modes and speeds. If I just want a slight little breeze, no problem. If I'm dying, I can really ump up the power very easily. I feel like it's a lot quieter than some of those battery operated ones. Yes, there's a little bit of noise, but I feel like it's a lot less obtrusive than some of the ones that are more electrical and electronic. And as I've mentioned before, I take my Disney outfits very seriously. From my ears to my shoes and everything in between, everything is very well thought out in advance, days or weeks in advance. So why should I take my really cute little Ariel outfit and ruin it with some little electronic gadget? So today I'm taking a few of these folding fans that I have sitting around. They've been various favors for showers and weddings and things that I've helped host in the past. So I have a few of these just lying around personally, but as I said, they're easy to find a whole bunch of different ones and various places online. So whatever color or style you are looking for to get the character or the theme that you're wanting to portray. For materials, you will need your fans, a pencil, various paint brushes, and an assortment of paint colors appropriate to your theme. The folds in the fan will give you a, a really good vertical frame of reference for spacing. And then you can fold the fan up and draw lines across all the folds to give yourself some good horizontal guidelines. Then when you unfold the fan, you have these little dots that you can use to keep everything even and of the same height. For my first fan, I'm painting some little gold scallopy drapes across the yellow paper fan. If you haven't guessed yet, this is going to be a Belle or Beauty and the Beast fan. The drapes are a simple U-shape that's nice and easy to paint, and then if you use your little pencil dots 
or your guidelines, it's pretty easy to keep them fairly similar, but they don't have to be exact because draped fabric isn't exactly the same from one piece to the other. Once I have my bottom set of drapes painted in gold, I'm going to go back in with a dark brown paint to add a little bit of detail, like folds in the cloth. Again, these don't have to be the same from one drape to the other. A little irregularity is going to be a little more natural and realistic. And then I work my way along the drapes until that line is finished. And then I repeat the same thing going across the top of the fan. The way the fan is constructed, and I have this bamboo stripe on one side, and then the number of folds in between gives me this empty space on the far left. So I'm going to put in some typography. If you're not so great with hand lettering, I recommend the site 1001 fonts. You can type the words you want into the box near the top, and it will show you those words in a bunch of different fonts, sorted by different themes and types, so you can get the look that you want. Just like the drapes, I painted my words in gold, and then I went back in with the dark brown to give them a little bit of definition and pop. And that finishes my first fan. For my second fan, the typography is actually the more important part, so if you're better at writing and letters, this would be a really good way for you to go. I rubbed my typography in with white paint on a thin, flat brush, then I used a bright, very aerial teal and sort of shaded the letters going down the left and bottom edges of the thicker lines. Again, this is just to give it a little bit of depth and to add a little bit of pop of color. Once I had my letters done, I went back in and drew some bubbles to dot my eyes and off trailing on the right side. And that finishes my aerial fan. If you are a little more artistically inclined, you can draw whatever image you want onto your fan in paper and then go over it with Sharpie or a fine pen. I filled in the larger, bulkier spaces of black with the Sharpie, and anywhere that was a smaller, more detailed section, I went in with my fine point Sharpie pen. Those always work really well together for me, and I think that they give me a good variety of large area to fine detail. Then I went in with a small paintbrush and I added some pops of color. Again, I'm keeping the palette very simple, so I just did a few red pops, being sure to put some on both Mickey and on Minnie so they kind of match and they feel like they belong together. If you mess up a little bit, no problem. You can always go back in with the Sharpie and touch up anywhere that you went slightly outside of the line. I just feel it's easier for me to, in a case like this to get all the color down after all the inking is done so I have a better grasp of where everything's going to be. Once I had the red done on Mickey and Minnie, I went ahead and filled in my background shapes. In this case, I used a few hearts and little smudgy shapes all spread and spraying across the fan. For my Mrs. Potts fan, I used a lot of the same techniques to get the even vertical lines as I did on my first fan. Once the gold lines were down, I started at the bottom and alternated between teal and pink little scallop shapes, making the pink ones slightly larger than the teal ones. Once I had my scallops done, I went in and I filled across the top with the lilac paint. The gold squiggle with the lilac above it is supposed to represent her little teapot lid. I wanted to do the bottom lilac section last so that I would be sure that my pink and teal scallops had dried completely before I went in and started painting over them. That way I could use the lilac to clean up my edges and make my scallops nice and pointy down at the bottom a whole lot easier. And now I have a variety of fans for different Disney parks characters, themes, outfits, etc. What do you think? Which one do you like the best? What character do you think I should do in the future? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, remember to like the video. Have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time.